Welcome to Intuit.com. I'll be talking about our next question what is Java serialization? Very important topic. Every Java developer should know what is Java serialization, what is happening behind serialization, what are the benefits of serialization. Let's go to the definition of Java serialization. Java provides a mechanism called object serialization where an object can be represented as a sequence of bytes that includes the object's data as, as well as information about the object's type and the types of data stored in the object. Primary purpose of Java serialization is to write an object into a string. Okay, so that it can be transferred through a network that and that object can be rebuilt again. See, uh, I'll, I'll be giving you an example so that I can understand. After a serialized object has been written to a file, it can be read from the file and the and deserialized that is the type information and the bytes that represent the object and its state data can be used to recreate the object in memory. Most important point is the entire process is JVM independent, meaning an object can be serialized in one platform or one platform and deserialized on an entirely different platform. Classes object into string, object into output string or high level streams that contain methods for serializing and deserializing an object. You have an object called table. It has some attributes like height, uh, length, and color, everything. Okay. So you want to serialize this object. That means you want to you want to store the state of this object table. Table contains height, length, and color. Okay. Length, breadth, height, and color. Okay. There are the these are the four parameters. And when I say serialize, serialize. So these state will be persisted in a flat file. Okay. So the advantage is you are storing, you are able to persist the state of an object. State means the values. Now, the object's output string class contains many write methods for writing various data types, but one method in particular stands out. You can write the object, that means you you create an object called table which has height, length, height, uh, length, and color, and you can write it to a flat file. The, the above method serializes an object and sends it to the output stream. Similarly, the output input stream contains the following method for deserializing an object. You have written to a particular flat file, then you can read it. This method retrieves the next out object out of the stream and deserializes. The return value is object, so you will need to cast it to its appropriate data type. So, I'll take one more example. You create an object called car, car object, which has color, speed, color and speed. Okay, only three, only these two are there and model number. So these three parameters are there. Okay, whenever you, whenever you say write object, so I created an object. I, it has three state, three data. That means state, color, uh, color, speed, and model. Color, model and speed. Okay, so when I say write object, so the object, the flat file contains stream of byte which has about which has the data type meta information. Meta information that means, for example, model color color is blue. So I will store blue. Then what is the data type? It's a string. So string also I will store. See, finally the intention is I store something in a flat file, and it should be possible to re rebuild the same object at the same stream. So the intention is the goal is to build the same object with the same state. Please repeat it again. Same object with the same state. So when I store, when I store, say for example, car one, say car Ford, Ford, okay, car Ford. When I store the car Ford object, so it will have the model number, state, and the speed. Okay, so when I, when I rebuild again, it should come as it is. <coughs> okay, it's a, since it's a very big topic, I have made a very small video. Now, I will be explaining in future videos about how Java serialization works. I will be giving you short demo in Eclipse. What is transient variable? What is the benefit? What happens if the superclass does not implement a serializable interface? What happens if the subclass does not implement a serializable interface? How to avoid default serialization? Okay, for, for few objects, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to serialize. How do you avoid it? So, I will be talking about this. I will be answering these five questions, so which is very, very important. If you are experienced, uh, Java developer, you need to know all these answers for all these questions.
Okay, see you in the next video for Java serialization. For more Java interview questions, please log on to interview.com, India's top interview guide. All the best for your interview and thank you for watching this video. Thank you.